Will this major news move the stock market in a big way this morning? We come out here, we look at the fear and greed index. We are sitting at 57. We take a look at the economic calendar. What do we see? At 10 a.m., we have existing home sales and Richmond Manufacturing Index. And no, that is not the news that I'm speaking about this morning. We come over and look at this news article this morning. GM far exceeds second quarter estimates. Will restructure struggling China business. Now, if we come over and we take a look at GM stock this morning, what is it doing? It is on the move higher. GM stock is up 4.5%. And on the daily chart, you can see we've been chug, 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 chugging along ever since last November. And now we're having another major gap. Now, let's not forget, we are in the midst of earnings season. We have a lot of earnings to contend with. And today, after the bell, we have two big players out there. One being Tesla, the second one being Google. And when we look at the expected movers, Tesla is the winner in terms of the expected moves today. Tesla is expected to move plus or minus 9%. Google's only expected to move plus or minus 7%. And let's not forget, we also have Visa coming out. Now, Visa could also be a good barometer in terms of how strong is the consumer right now? Meaning, are we gonna see a slowing down of consumer spending, which also could spark the Fed to start aggressively cutting rates like the Fed watch tool is, is predicting right now. They're expecting July to keep rates the same, and then the Fed is going to go on a rate cutting campaign. Now, keep in mind, when the Fed goes on an aggressive rate cutting campaign, every time the Fed has aggressively cut rates in the past, you can see by this chart right here, the stock has suffered major drops in the past. So if we come over and look at the overseas markets real quick, we can see the DAX right now is up 211 points. We look at the Nikkei last night down 4.61 points. The HSI down 166 points and our markets last night were pulling back only to come all the way back up at this moment is this going to be a good sign out here for the stock market today and we look at the one stock that could benefit from the news today and that is going to be tesla tesla we want to pay very close attention to now if we zoom this chart out quite a bit is tesla going to try to make a run towards all-time highs and no i'm not saying right here right now because if we zoom this up I want to share with you guys this pattern real quick. One, we had an ABC pattern right here. But this could also be a five-wave Elliott pattern. This would be leg one. Leg two is a pullback. Leg three. Leg four was a pullback. Leg five could still be in the works. We come over here and we measure A to B equals C to D for that last leg. That gives Tesla a price target of about 336. Now, in order for that pattern to be validated, we must take out the swing point right up here at 271.13. If we start coming below 232.70, then that would cause us to have to redraw this pattern out. And keep in mind, we're going to get a lot of insight today after the bell when Tesla comes out with their earnings announcement. We come over this morning, we take a look at the dollar index, dollar index on the move up higher, up 15 cents on the session. We see the MACD indicator trying to firm up at these levels. Then we come over, we take a look at the 10-year yield down slightly. Now that is favorable for the bulls. Yields going down normally favors the bulls in the market. Then we come over, we look at the precious metal gold. What do we see? Gold trying to bounce right off this 50% Fibonacci retracement level. And you can see it came right down to the edge of this distribution area on the profile. So now if gold can indeed bounce off this level, then that could set up the stage where gold can be setting up a massive A to B equals C to D pattern. That pattern would actually complete all the way up here at about 2,570. Now, will gold make it up there or not? You guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a big thumbs up. Now, as of lately, crude oil has been showing signs of weakness. And this morning, we see crude oil is currently down about 38 cents. Now, when we look at this, the MACD indicator is also rolled over to the downside. And if I'm looking, you know, if crude oil is going to try to stage a bounce, it really needs to do it somewhere around this area. I don't, I don't really want to see it going much below 77.49. Otherwise, that's going to open the door that we can see crude oil all the way back down here around 71.84. Now, as we come over and look at the cues, this is what we've been talking about over the past week or so. We have a left shoulder head. Will we be forming a right shoulder over here? Keep in mind, we do have a gap over here. And then when we look at the composite profile, look at this valley within the profile. This is called a minus development area. A lot of times the market will come back into that area, reject down, come back in. And then the more times we come back into this area, 
the more likely it's going to break and give way, meaning we could substantially go higher if indeed that does pan out. Then we come over and look at the one hour chart. MACD indicator across to the upside with a good separation on the 30 minute chart on a good separation on the way up as well. But something that is a bit concerning, we do, we do have a gap below from yesterday and that gap to be filled would be all the way down here about 475.22. Right now, we are trading up here at 482.10, and in pre-market, we're actually down 22 cents. Now, when we look at the profile shape, I would classify this as a P as in Paul. Now, how do we play this? This doesn't necessarily mean bullish or bearish. What it does say, however, is if we break value area low, which comes in at 480.80, then we're highly likely to explore the lower third of the range, somewhere around 478.78. We breached that, then we're looking at right, right down here at gap support, and then we're looking for the gap to come all the way down and get filled. Now, the point of control does come in at 482.30, and value area high is going to be about 483.07. So if we break value area high today and we're staying above it, then I want to stay on the long side of the trade. I want to make everybody aware, Apex 7A, massive 80% sale off all their valuation accounts passing as little as one day and you can also get a 150k account for only $40 you get a 250k account for only $40 and you get a 300k account for only $40 so if you want to take advantage of this offer use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout so if we break value area high today and we're staying above it then I want to stay on the long side of the trade now some of the targets for that long trade would be right up here towards 486.44 to about 486.83 the next minus development area above us you can see it right here on the profile we breached that then we're looking right up here towards gap resistance at 488.86 and then all the way up here for the gap to come back and completely fill however i do want to make you guys aware as well that if we start breaking above value area high and then throughout the day we start trading back below it then i want to target the point of control then i want to target value area low then I want to target the lower third of the range, gap support, and then all the way down here for the gap to get filled. Now, in the event we start coming down lower today and we start getting below value area low, if we start coming back above value area low, then the rotation would say, all right, we need to shift gears and get back on the buy side of the trade. Now, as we come over and look at the NASDAQ, last night we had a great live stream. We had a pretty good runner out there last night. Hopefully, you guys were able to catch it. But you can see we are above the weekly value area low. And now really the next point of interest for me is gonna be this minus development area. Now, do we make it there or not? You can see we have now had the chance to set up an A to B equals C to D pattern. We draw that pattern like this, A to B. B to C would be the corrective move. And look, the 100% level would actually bring us above the minus development area on the weekly chart. Then as we come over and look at the daily profiles, notice what we did. We came all the way back up hitting the point of control above us at 20,003.25. If you look, currently we are above the developing value area high, but even more important than that, last night we dipped below value area low, and then what do we do? We came right back up above us. So what does that set up? That sets up a volume profile rotation trade on the way up, and that's exactly what transpired out here. We broke below value area low, we came up towards the point of control. So right now, from a daily perspective, I'm still in buy side mode. Now, where does that change? If we break value area high, then we start coming back down. That would make me want to shift to be on the sell side. Or if we start breaking value area low, then I don't want to be on the sell side. Or once the overnight volume profile levels are matured, we start coming back down below value area high, then we could also be on the sell side of this market. Keep in mind though, today, if we do make it above value area high from the prior day, then we start coming down. I would want to target the point of control as target number one, but then we can target all these overnight volume profile levels before ultimately looking for the gap from Sunday to be filled along with this untested point of control down here at 19,704. Now, when we come over and look at the SPY, you can see yesterday we had a pretty bullish candle. Right now, pre market, we're up 59 cents. Now, here's where I'm a little bit concerned MACD indicator is elevated above the zero line. We do have a cross to the downside. However, we want to keep in mind, price is always king. Then we look on the one hour chart. We have a good separation of the MACD lines, but we did have some wicks on these three candles back to back the last three hours of the day. On the 30 minute chart, we have a good separation of the MACD lines. You can see right now we're actually trading right around yesterday's high. If you look, we still have the gap below us and we look at the volume profile levels, value area low will come in at 552.87. The point of control comes in at 554.76. And value area high comes in at 555.16.
So if we break value area high, I want to stay on the buy side of the trade. And if we look, I want you guys to pay very close attention. We have a little minus development area right over here in the profile. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw this out real quick. And it's going to go something like this. That's going to be anywhere from about 557.23 up here to about 557.81. If we're trading above value area high, this is going to be one of the targets I will want to focus on today. However, if we break above value area high and then we start trading lower, I then want to target the point of control, value area low. Then I want to target right down here towards gap support and then see, can we come all the way down, fill in the gap out here? Then as we come over and look at the S&P 500, you can see where are we trading? We're trading above value area low. And what have we done so far overnight? We've come right into the edge of this minus development area off the weekly profile. You can see we just wicked into it. Boom, we slightly come back down. Then as we come over and look at the 30 minute chart, here's that minus development area. We actually just barely missed it by one tick yesterday. We just now got into it. Are we gonna get a little bit of a knee jerk reaction on the way down? And then ultimately try to build calls and try to push up and out of this area. Here's where we have a little bit of problems though, because you can see right now we were able to breach above value area high from yesterday and now we're below it. So what does that set, set up? That sets up a volume profile trade on the way down, which means we need to pay very close attention to the point of control. That should be the next target location. We need to be looking for sell side trades unless we get back above value area high, or if we come all the way down below value area low and we come back up, or if we can, or if we can migrate through the volume profile levels, from the overnight session, meaning maybe we come down below value area high, we breach above that, then we can look to target the daily value area high, then we can look to target some of these other target areas to the upside. Look, we had very poor market structure all along this area, and right over here also has my attention. We talked about this yesterday, anywhere from a price point of 56.31 up here to about 56.40. This is basically a structure breakdown level that we have failed to come back and test at this moment. So now as we come over, we look at the overnight volume profile level, starting off with the NASDAQ. We have value area low coming at 19,889.75. We have the point of control, 19,935.25. And value area high will come in at 19,970.25. Now, overnight, we've had a 147 point range so far. Now, if we can start breaking above value area high from the overnight, then we can target that point of control. Then we can target yesterday's value area high. Then anything above yesterday's value area high, we need to come back over and refer to the weekly volume profile levels for additional targets to the upside. Then as we come over and look at the S&P 500, you can see overnight we've had a 30 point range. Value area low comes in at 5592.50. The point of control will come in at 5607.50. Value area high will come in at 5609.00. Now, if we can crack back above value area high from the overnight, then I want to go ahead and target yesterday's value area high. I want to retarget the minus development area. And, then, and if we come back into minus development area again, it's highly probable it is going to break. And then we're going to work our way up towards the next minus development area right above us. Now, if you guys want to learn how to trade volume profile using order flow, watch this video right here.